Hi, today I'm reviewing the Skin Medica Total Defense and Repair SPF. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobiusbeauty.com. Check out my Patreon community or click on the Amazon link below. Okay, so interesting fact about this sunscreen. It is the very first real face sunscreen that I ever used. Very true. It was a larger bottle, but I think I I liked it. You know, it was the very first SPF I used. Their retinol is the first retinol I ever used. So anyway, kind of an interesting fact. So I thought I would make full circle and finally get a chance to review it. Although I've got another sunscreen from them, which I'll have to review as well. So anyway, so Skin Medica calls this uh, a sunscreen which protects skin from sun damage prevents aging due to chronic exposure to infrared light. Using an advanced antioxidant complex, this restorative formula goes beyond UVA and UVB protection, reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, improving skin's texture and evening skin tone, leaving you with a smooth, polished complexion. And it probably does most of those. Although, any sunscreen is anti-aging. I mean, sunscreen is really the only anti-aging thing you can do, so... Keep that one in mind when they call an anti-aging sunscreen. As long as it's over an SPF of 30 and really protects from UVA rays, it's anti-aging. Okay, so on to my first criteria, which is packaging. Obviously, this wasn't the full size, um, but they both come in a nice opaque squeeze tube bottle, so no issues with that. Protects the ingredients from exposure to light and air. In terms of alcohol, this does not contain any drying or denatured types of alcohol. It does contain battle alcohol. I like that name, battle. B-A-T-Y-L. Sounds like battle. Battle alcohol, which is a good alcohol used for skin conditioning and also stabilizing formulas. In terms of fragrance, this contains no fragrance ingredients or essential oils. It does have a very, very, very light chemical scent to it, which dissipates quickly. So no issues with that. Manufacturing location for this one is the U.S., so no issues with that. Although, really, I almost think sunscreens made in the U.S. should almost get a knock against them just because the U.S. is so far behind. But anyway, I should almost do it, but I'm not going to. Because as long as they use some good ingredients, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be made in the U.S., but the FDA is so far behind. Okay, so... The SPF protection is SPF of 34, which is just above what I recommend using daily, which is 30, so no issues with that. Then we get to the UVA protection factor. UVA rays are aging, and they're finding out more information, more research is being done on them every day, and we're finding out that they're not good for skin. And most sunscreens up until the last couple decades really have focused on UVB rays, which are the ones that give you a burn. So, this one states that it has broad spectrum coverage. Although there is a, I have a link to it in below, the BASF sunscreen simulator, which you can, um, it's kind of fun. I'm kind of a dork, but you can go in and add filters used in a sunscreen and what percentages, and it'll give you kind of some information on what they think based on those ingredients the protection is. Um, this one says it's okay in terms of UVA protection, um, but in my opinion, this in, does not provide the best UVA protection you could have. Um, I prefer to see really great UVA protection, especially now that since for so long I just used U.S. made sunscreens, I really now need to really up my game to help kind of slow down the aging process. So, despite the fact that this qualifies as broad spectrum in the U.S., it doesn't provide the best coverage of UVA rays, especially as I would like to see in a daily use sunscreen. That's it. So, I mean, it's kind of not Skin Medica's fault that the U.S. is so far behind, but there are other things they could do to kind of mitigate that or make the protection better, and they just didn't. They went with broad spectrum, which is... Anytime you see broad spectrum... It means you're getting some coverage of UVA rays, but maybe not necessarily as high as you should be using every day, especially if you're really into anti-aging. So, okay, in terms of the filters used, you've got zinc oxide at 8%, which is a UV ray re, uh, reflector. Then we've got uh, 
octanoxate at 7.5%, which is an ingredient which absorbs mostly UVB rays and absorbs a limited amount of UVA rays. And then we've got octosylate at 3%, which absorbs mostly UVB rays. So as you can see, you're kind of limited by those three ingredients, the real protection from UVA rays. Okay, then in terms of white cast, this one is, there we go. This one really um, doesn't have much of a white cast, mild white cast, I would say. But the better you absorb or smoothen into the skin, the less noticeable it will be. But it does have a mild white cast. Um, zinc oxide is, I think they have a tinted formula of this. Or the other version I have from Skin Medica is tinted. So that helps kind of make the white cast not as noticeable. But it does have a mild white cast. And in terms of texture, uh, it's got a thick texture to it. And it sets to an extremely matte, non-sticky finish. Very, very matte. And very not sticky. So for people that like something that's not sticky, this one's not sticky at all. Um, so that's nice to see, especially for people that might not apply a foundation over their sunscreen. It's really nice that it has such a nice matte finish. Um, then in terms of ease of use, the application of it, if you use several layers of sunscreen under it, can be a bit tricky because it can pill at times. It doesn't necessarily happen all the time, but if you apply a couple layers of products underneath it and then try and apply this over it and really try and smooth it in, uh, sometimes it can pill slightly. It's not a ton of pilling. I've tried much worse sunscreens, but it does slightly pill. Um, so... Uh, if you apply it over a serum that has a nice liquidy radiant finish, it applies a bit easier. Um, applying foundation over it can also be a bit tricky, especially if you use a long wearing foundation or a matte finish foundation. Uh, it can pill a bit as well and take some effort to smooth it to a nice even finish, probably because of the high amounts of silica in it and dimethicone, which give it kind of that texture. Okay, then in terms of antioxidants and beneficial ingredients, this one actually surprised me. Um, I don't know. Skin Medica, the brand, can be super hit or miss for me. I, some of their products are quite impressive and work very well, and some are just terrible and expensive. So we've got squalane, a great antioxidant and hydrating ingredient. Uh, niacinamide, great for skin brightening, helps with pores, helps with skin texture. Uh, then we've got... Polygonum alveolarate, alveolarate, uh, which you see that look on my face. Oh my gosh, it's a name, and I'm gonna butcher it, and I did. Um, which is a great antioxidant, a flavonoid-rich plant, which also has properties that can help protect skin from UV damage. Uh, then we've got Phalasis argillata, which is a good antioxidant, also known as Indian gooseberry. I should have started with that. Uh, which is great for calming skin, a good antioxidant source. Then we've got Dunalea selena, which is a microalgae that help, that is a source of beta carotene, antioxidant, and also a source of vitamin B13. Then we've got Co CoQ10, great antioxidant, uh, helps cells rebuild collagen and elastin. Green tea extract, great antioxidant, anti-aging source of polyphenols. Then we've got uh, snow mushroom extract, which is a great hydrating ingredient. And then two types of vitamin E, which are great antioxidant and skin hydrating ingredient. Okay, then we get to the next criteria, which is acneogenic ingredients. This one is not good for acne prone skin. If you have acne prone skin or have ever had a real breakout or an issue with breakouts, I'd recommend passing on this one because it's got quite a long list. So we've got glycerol stearate, a fungal acne trigger, cetera alcohol, shea butter, squalane, isosteric acid, butylene glycol, vitamin E, dimethicone, cetera 20, PEG 100 stearate. That's a long list. And some of those are quite acneogenic, so keep that in mind. Although, this being my first sunscreen, I never had any issues with it, so... That doesn't necessarily mean you won't, but I haven't had issues with it, so. 
Okay, in terms of animal testing, this was interesting. Doing a little bit of research on this, it appears to be cruelty-free. Many of the sites, like Logical Harmony, that are all about cosmetics and which brands are cruelty-free and which brands aren't, lists Skin Medica as in the gray area. So seeing that, then I went to the Paula's Choice site, and they have this brand listed as cruelty-free. Then I went to PETA. PETA does not have them listed as cruelty-free. So it's like all over the place. It seems like maybe they're in a gray area. I just, when I saw the brand, I initially assumed that they were not. So I gave them the benefit of the, fit of the doubt. I've emailed them to ask them their stance. I haven't heard back. If I hear back, I'll leave a comment. So I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, then we get to performance and... It will certainly prevent you from burning, although it won't protect you from UVA rays. Uh, it sets to a nice matte finish. So for those of you that have a short morning routine, don't wear a foundation. This works well and has a nice matte finish. So not sticky either. Has a great list of beneficial ingredients. Uh, an acne prone skin, in my opinion, should probably pass on this since it's got a lot of acneogenic ingredients. Um, Okay, then we get to the price. So this is obviously the travel size. The full size is 2.3 ounces, which is about 65 milliliters. And it costs about $68. So that makes it $1.04 per milliliter, which is so far the most expensive one I reviewed this far. And I think it's probably the most expensive one that I'm going to review in the whole sunscreen week. So, um, anyway, although if you love it, there's nothing wrong with it. It just could be a bit better, especially for being the most expensive. I would like to see a bit better coverage all the way around. So, overall, with 15 being a perfect score, this got a 9, which is the lowest so far. It's ironic. It's got the lowest rating so far, but it's the most expensive. Isn't that always how it always works? I, it just never fails. So, anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to try this or if you've tried any of the other Skin Medic uh, sunscreens, uh, what your thoughts are on it. So, leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow.